Well, our next guest, Bradley Jacobs, has founded and led two multi-billion dollar publicly traded companies, including United Rentals, the world's largest equipment rental company. And now he is getting back into the game with his $135 million investment of his own money into Express One, which is a third party transportation service. Now, this is all pending shareholder approval. And Jacobs will then become Express One's chairman and CEO, where he hopes to consolidate the market, grow the company, of course, and create jobs. Brad joins us now for this Bloomberg exclusive. Brad, great to have you with us. Thank you. Why did you make this investment? Because it's an industry that's very big, trillion transportation. dollars. Transportation. Yes. Trillion dollar industry just in the United States. And then the two subsections that I'm going to consolidate, freight brokerage and freight forwarding, are about $200 billion just in of themselves. So I have a very big pond to go fishing in. Right, now you don't own the fleets, right? You, you don't own any of that. Okay, so, so what you're doing is you're brokering, right? Exactly. Is, is that, yeah, okay. Exactly right. So who are your biggest competitors then? Well, the two biggest leaders here in the States are C.H. Robinson, which is the biggest freight broker, and Expeditors of Washington, which is the biggest freight forwarder that's based in the United States. Okay. Um, what is this, you know, your investment in this company, you know, in the bigger picture, what does this tell you about, or what, what does this say from you about what you think about where the economy is headed? I think the economy long term probably is going to be much better. Short term, it's going to be wavy. This business model works in both environments, whether it's a downturn or an upturn. So I'm okay with it. Okay. What are the what are the customers telling you? I mean, I know you're just you know you're just getting into this business, but um, are you seeing more demand? Are you hearing about more demand or what? I've met with about a hundred freight brokers and freight forwarders over the last few months, and I hear mixed stories. Particularly in the last six weeks, I hear some people saying that business is soft and that retailing demand is down, and even manufacturing demand is down. And I have others saying that they're growing, but maybe they're just taking market share. So I don't know the answer to that. It's okay. uncertain. Uh, but are you getting any sense that they're at an inflection point at all? I mean, I keep using I don't that know. phrase, but I don't know. It's 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 an, it's an uncertain f phrase right now. Okay, uh, you didn't seek to get any loans for this for this purchase, right? Funding you, it with cash. Did you always want to do that, or or yeah, or, or, or did you not want that's to? That's been the plan. That has been the plan. Yeah. Um, are, you know, and you've got other investors in it. I mean, are, did any of them go out and raise funds or, or try to no. or try to borrow? No, at these all? are all accredited investors. Okay. We're putting 100, up to $150 million in. $135 million is coming from Jacobs Private Equity. And the other up to $15 million is coming from a handful of qualified investors. Now, this is what, your 501st acquisition? Or Something like that. <laughs> Something yeah. like that? Yeah, we lost count. <laughs> so, so tell me, I mean, as you've been building these companies, right, um, and as you've been acquiring them you know, all throughout your career, uh, what is what is going on now in the mergers and acquisition space that is different than what you've experienced over the last you know several decades well, that you've been in, in some ways it's very different because on the one hand you don't have the uh, debt financing so readily available uh, on the other hand you have lots of equity out there most in the hands of private equity and, and in funds chasing uh, the same amount of deals right and so so valuations are high uh, what are CEOs telling you about acquisitions? I mean, are they saying that they want to keep their cash because they're worried about the economy or that they just don't see anything of value right now? Well, the, I'm mainly talking to CEOs who want to sell these days rather than, <laughs> right. rather than acquirers. And, and, and I'm in a tricky little field here because these businesses are doing well. They generate free cash flow. Most of them have no debt on their balance sheet. Even during the downtime when business is low, they're still generating money. So they're not terribly motivated sellers. But if they, Okay, so, to, all right, so basically they're asking for higher prices then? Yeah. And why do you think that is? Because it's, it's supply and demand. There's lots of money out there chasing acquisitions, and the universe of acquisitions hasn't increased very much. Now, I'm picking an industry that's so huge, right. $3 trillion worldwide, $1 trillion in the United States, $200 billion in these subsects, that, you know, that doesn't matter so much. Mm, indeed. All right, Brad, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And I know, again, that that is pending shareholder approval uh, in an express one. That was Brad Jacobs.